So now, finally, we know there is an equality, we know the different schools of thought when it comes to talking about it, we know the difference between pure and efficient redistribution, we also know the difference between capital to labour inequality and labour inequality. So we know all that. Uh, and the next question, the logical question is, you know, what, what can be done about it, what to do about it. Uh, and I'm not going to dig into the solutions uh, or the possible solutions for inequality looking at this book. This is probably going to be, uh, I'm going to review another book on inequality and I'm going to talk about the different possible solutions to it uh, in a book review maybe in a few weeks. What I'm going to take from this book is an introduction to, again, two different types of uh, redistribution and here it can be differentiated from the discussion of pure and efficient redistribution because there it's kind of talking about the and it's looking at the macro level goal and motivation of what you're trying to do right it's very 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 high level is it pure or is it efficient uh, the, the distinction that i want to make here and that's the one that i got from the book but it's quite widely known is the distinction between fiscal redistribution and direct redistribution I always know. Okay, sorry. All right. Fiscal. Fiscal redistribution basically means taxes. You let the markets operate, you let the salaries come, you let the capital, the dividends be distributed, and then you kind of take that pot and uh, you tax it, right? And then this is how you get it from the rich and then take it to the poor. And, uh, you know, fis fiscal redistribution is something that Scandinavian countries do and uh, do quite well uh, last time I checked. So this is really the core idea of it. There is a lot more to say about it, uh, but fiscal redistribution basically means taxation. So the rich are taxed more if the system is working well, they earn more, they get more uh, in terms of capital or inheritance or whatever it may be. And then that uh, money is then taken and redistributed to uh, the poor right through different governmental redistribution departments schemes and so on and so forth so that's fiscal redistribution the second type is direct and that concerns basically an idea that you shouldn't wait until everything is kind of said and done until everyone worked and got their uh, kind of rewards for that you should actually intervene in the way the goods and services are produced in the in the production itself. So an example of direct redistribution is a manipulation of wages, for example, from the government. So uh, int introduction of a minimum wage or introduction of some sort of a set wage for the workers is an example of direct distribution, right? So it's not through the taxation system post factum, but it's about actually how much are you getting paid and uh, closing that gap. Now that we know the distinction between direct and fiscal redistribution, I already noted that Piketty is definitely, definitely in favor of the latter one. I want to just quote one paragraph for you. If one tries to redistribute capital income to labor by increasing workers' wages, thereby increasing the price of labor, firms, and therefore the economy as a whole, will use less labor and more capital, so that the level of employment will decrease and labor's share of total income will increase less than the initial wage increase um, might have led one to believe. This would not happen with fiscal redistribution. If one tax the profits of firms or capital income paid by firms to capital owning households, one could finance a fiscal transfer or tax decrease to achieve the same redistribution of income to workers without increasing the labor cost of firms and thus without triggering a substitution of capital for labor uh, that is basically negatively impacting employment. So just to simplify this uh, a bit, uh, also for myself, what happens when you directly redistribute wealth? So for example, an introduction of minimum wage leads to a rise in price of a worker that is getting that minimum wage to the firm. So logically, what the firm is going to think is, huh, okay, so we don't want to pay this much now that this minimum wage is introduced. What we're going to try to figure out is we're going to invest more in R&D and uh, we actually will try to automate those somehow, right? So that completely, that might completely defeat the purpose of that redistribution because now instead of, uh, you know, not getting paid enough, the 
workers will have no job, so will be unemployed, right? Because the firm optimizes for the profitability. Uh, as Piketty argues, with fiscal redistribution, that doesn't happen, right? So that the employment stays intact and then the redistribution is done post factum through the tax system, uh, which he considers preferable to direct redistribution.